Right. Um, our our uh, staff at has, has uh, been off on internship, and uh, we're, we're sure uh, the very best with that, and we'll be joining us at the next meeting. Um, the next item, uh, number four on the agenda, is a request for support of CPA application um, Academy of Music. And I think Deborah Anthony is here, and if, uh, because of the size of the room, if you can, and, and my hearing, uh, if you can address the group as, as uh, if we were farther away than you might Do you want me to stand in front of here? I'm sure. I know, that's fine. I don't think you're going to That's just fine. I, I have a theater voice. I can project. Um, also, hold on just a second. This sure. is, um, sure. is um, you know, still a list of the things that we would like. So I'm here with Tom Douglas, um, who has worked on projects um, with us in the past on our historic preservation projects. Um, and we are here uh, requesting support for our next project. Before I go into that, I just would like to brief, briefly thank you for this opportunity to come before you to update you on our progress and where we're at in our historic preservation. I know it's been a, a long journey. We sort of had to piecemeal our projects together because it's, you know, as you know, it's, it's a lot of money. Um, We've had several sources of funding over the 10 years of my tenure at, since um, 2008. Uh, we have uh, brought in about five, uh, $545,000 uh, through the Academy of Music, $482,000 from the City of Northampton, uh, $749,000, $785,000 from the Community Preservation Fund, and $168,920 from the state of Massachusetts for capital um, improvements and equipment. Um, when I started there, the Academy of Music was a primarily a film house, and we had uh, uh, transition into a performing arts space, and there was there was really not a lot of equipment to uh, sustain a performing arts venue. So we had to. Uh, put money into lighting instruments and projectors and sound systems and things like that. In addition to shoring up the envelope of the building, we had new uh, exterior doors and windows, a new marquee. We had to replace the roof above the stage because it was leaking in the electrics. We had to shore up the um, opera house boxes because the water was leaking through the doors and so we had to put in new uh, carpentry in those spaces. And then the fun stuff uh, began where we got new seats, we refinished the floors, and um, repaired and repainted the interior of the, the auditorium space, which is what a lot of people got to see. But there was a lot of work that went into preserving this space ahead of that 2014 restoration um, project. There were pieces of the project um, that were approved by the CPA um, during the 2014 uh, funding period uh, where the, I believe it's a CPA provided about $245,000 or 275, I don't know David if you remember, they, the Academy raised 161,000 and the Overage we paid another 10,000 and we received 135,000 from the state for that project. Um, however, we, like I said, we had an Overage and we were not able to complete all the work. Um, we were not able to finish the opera boxes and we were not able to um, uh, replace some of the, um, the light, lighting fixtures um, that were in the auditorium. So going forward in our, our next round of historic pre preservation, and I'm going to have Tom Douglas walk you through the details, um, but the overview is, and you have the list there, we would like to complete the interior decorations of the uh, auditorium, uh, the interior renovations of the lobby, as well as the salon area. Uh, we had within the project, uh, previously we applied for CPA funds, we had uh, the restoration of the 
uh, handicapped accessible bathroom upstairs and drawings for an expansion of the bathrooms downstairs. Uh, we pulled those out and the Academy is going to be um, paying for those. Tom has generously uh, donated his time uh, to uh, draft the, the drawings. So at this point I'd like to present Tom Douglas. There's one that's over by the lock, but it's hard to fit that in, so it's probably better to Nope, nope. That's not a USB. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you're right. Couldn't see from the side. started any renovation. Um, uh, most of the, the color scheme you see here was from the 70s and the seats were probably from the uh, 70s and the 50s. So this is what we started with and um, let's see, how do I? Okay, all right. Um, and then this is how we went about picking the paint colors. I know I explained this before but we um, went to a bunch of different parts of the theater and we Use paint remover carefully and went down through the many different layers to find the original colors and stencils. Um, the stencils were really elaborate. We couldn't duplicate them with the money we had, but we still did um, a fair amount of work with new stenciling. So this is what we ended up with. And um, as Deborah said, this isn't quite finished. Even though it looks finished now, it's not finished. Um, but we did repaint the whole space based on the uh, color samples that we uncovered and also based on a number of other theaters um, from the same era that we researched uh, extensively. So um, the pictures I'm going to show you, they look like there's a lot of light in the theater because the camera is very still and takes a long exposure, but it doesn't look like this at all when you're in there. And I know you guys have been in there before. but um, So we went to a lot of effort to paint that ceiling with uh, kind of a cloud glaze, and there's stencils on the curving parts of the walls. Um, but the lighting in there, for the most part, is those uh, big recessed cans you see in the ceiling, um, the big LED fixtures that just shine down. You can barely see any of that work that we did on the ceiling and on the um, edge of the balcony. And that back wall um, on the very bottom there, underneath the balcony, is really very, very dark um, without any light on it. This is a ceiling. You can see the cans up closer. You can see the stenciling around the perimeter that gets zero light on it other than this long exposure from a camera. These are the opera boxes that um, have very little light in them. If you remember back when, um, before we did this project, there was artwork hanging in the opera boxes and at least there was something to look at there that was interesting. Right now it's just a maroon colored ball. And so we had always planned on putting a simple stencil pattern there to go with the rest of the stencils of the theater, but um, 
this is one of the areas we had to cut because we, we ran out of money with the project. There were a number of things that uh, cost us more money during that project. Um, the plaster repair was far more extensive than we ever thought. We, um, there were so many cracks and so much plaster that separated from the theater that we spent more money just dealing with all the plaster that was falling off on that building. Um, we did still do an elaborate paint scheme. Um, it certainly wasn't cheap, but we got this, I think, an amazing project for very, very little money comparable to what other theaters are doing in the country. I mean, this would have been a multi-million dollar project almost anywhere else if it weren't for a lot of volunteer work and a lot of very low pricing. So we're not here begging for um, money for an overly expensive, crazy scheme. We're just trying to finish the <coughs> modest things that we did that I think have a big impact on the theater. Because one of the things I, you know, I listened to the CPA hearing and I, and I heard two, two things that stood out to me. Um, and, and they were that the work that we're planning to do now would not affect the patron experience. And the other thing was that there's very little, little historic value to what we were doing. So um, I'm just trying here to argue that, that, that we don't feel like that's really the case at all. I think that the changes that we've done so far, if you look back to that original photo, I think affect the patron experience in a, in a really massive way. I think that we've brought the theater up to the modern era with this historic pres um, preservation effort, and it's once again become a real important cultural icon in the city. Um, and, we're, and the Academy is attracting really good acts. They've got great um, uh, attendance, and they're doing a lot of community outreach um, and community performances. This is just one area where I know that there was an objection of why do we need any lights underneath the balcony. This is a picture of underneath the balcony. Um, those little white dots on the ceiling are just um, box, box covers. They're little white discs that cover an uh, electric box that we put, we wired them in, and we just didn't have the money to uh, buy the light fixtures at that point. So this space here, you would never see that big flash of light on the ceiling. That, that space underneath the balcony is practically black when you're there in reality. Um, these are the old light fixtures from the 70s, I think. Um, you know, they're not bad, but they're not at all in keeping with the period um, of the theater. I think they're put in by Dwayne Robinson, I think in the 70s when St. Chandelier in the lobby was put in. Um, so, and then this was the light, that, a brand new light that we put in in our last um, renovation. Um, you can't really see it in detail, but this was a $25 light from Home Depot. And we used a lot of these um, because we ran out of money. We couldn't do the fixtures that we really wanted to do that were historically in keeping. So they do the job. They're really, really glary. They just have some cheap, uh, you know, um, LED bulbs in them. The, the globe is uh, just pure white, has no um, amber color to it, which would have been uh, more in keeping with what was original. Um, and we'd love to get rid of these $25 fixtures. We never bought them, um, intending to ever keep them for more than a couple of years. You know, we just spent um, very little money so we could get something to open the doors and then thought eventually we would get new <coughs> lighting. So um, and this is one of the original fixtures that's in the salon. Um, it's interesting because these were cast metal um, and we just had, they, they originally had a, a bulb screwed into them and I think they had some kind of shade on them. And the sconces in the theater were very similar too. I think Deborah showed, at one point, you still, we have an old yeah. sconce um, that, um, that was similar in style to this. Um, so what we're looking to do as a replacement fixture are, are these fixtures from Rejuvenation Hardware. They're, they're very much in keeping with that era um, and style. They have um, these kind of amber colored globes that give a nice soft light. And it's not, they're not glary, they're very diffused. They hang from different, they're different sizes, they're different um, lengths. And I think they, these will work well in the theater. They're not overly expensive. Um, and then this was the sconce that we were thinking about using. There's two different examples one here. We were trying to, we're debating which one would be better because they're different price points. But these were far, far more in keeping. Uh, the one on the left is very much like the original um, uh, fixture from the theater. We only have the metal part that Deborah, I think, showed you before. The glass globes disappeared many years ago. Um, but so we, we'd like to buy these 
um, which are a really good, faithful um, alternative to, to what the original was. Um, so that was the auditorium. The, the, the other part, of, we'd like to try to finish out the rest of the public spaces in the project. Um, this is the lobby space. Um, it still has a paint scheme from the 70s. Um, the chandelier was donated by a patron in the 70s, I think, and it, it's done a really nice job over the years. I don't know what was there originally. We have newspaper articles from the opening of the academy, but um, they didn't mention what the lighting was here. But we'd really like to take away that chandelier. And there's a, a cove. You can see where the, um, the red paint ends and the white paint, that's the dome, begins. Um, there's a little uh, niche there that we could put in an LED cove light and probably light that entire dome um, in a really spectacular way and get rid of the shape later. We'd keep the um, you know concession stand. There's not a lot of um, other places it can go, and we're not asking for money for, to, to renovate that either. Um, we'd like to repaint the space. We'd keep the carpet. Um, so we, we'd probably glaze the dome in a decorative way like we did the interior of the auditorium and then repaint the walls to be in more keeping with um, the color scheme that we'd already picked out. This is just another theater that I, um, this is in Pittsfield, this is a colonial theater that one of the theaters we used as kind of a inspiration. It was the same era as the Academy, different architect, um, very similar color scheme. But you can see, if you just look underneath the balcony of this space, you can see how, it, how well lit it is um, for the patrons. And uh, the Academy is the exact opposite. Underneath the balcony right now is just very, very dark. We just have those little brass, you know, two arm sconces there. So we're kind of going for trying to bring that amount of light and um, depth to the theater. It makes it more safe. And also, you can see much more of the architecture. Oh, and then one other thing is one thing we had planned if you see the edge of the balcony there with the theatrical light fixtures, we did put a bar in in our 2014 renovation to hold some lights. Um, uh, that could light the boxes, the opera boxes, and the ceiling. We never bought them. That was also something we ran out of money for. But that would provide that position and a couple of other positions would require, I mean, would allow us to light the ceiling that we spent so much money on painting in a decorative way, and which right now people barely notice because you look up at these bright uh, cans shining down on your eyes. So. Um, we provided for that, but we just couldn't buy them. The outer lobby, you know, nothing's been done with that at all. Um, it just needs to be repainted. Um, and this is the salon that um, it did get repainted, but it was before we started working on it. And we just do like to do a little bit of repainting in there and get some uh, shades for those existing old lights. Uh, that's the basement. It's in good shape. That's the hallway to the. Um, basement bathrooms. Um, you know, we're asking for money to repaint that if we didn't have to. wouldn't be the end of the world. Um, and then I just brought this to show you what in the future we would like to do. This is a space that I'm sure none of you, of you have seen before. This is the back stair that took you up to the upper balcony. And this was the cheap seats, the real cheap seats. Um, this is just a future project that we'd like to tackle someday if we can get some money from the state. But um, it's a really exciting project because you can see that arch there that allows you um, a view into the back balcony. Where those ladders are at the top of the stair, that's where the projection booth is. Um, and so to the left, that's the projection booth that was put in in the 30s. To the right is that arch that originally allowed you to be in the back of the balcony and look out. So, this is just a future project that I brought that, that we have no money for now. We're just trying to think of how do we plan this, and Deborah and I have been brainstorming about how we could do this in the future. It's really just a, 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 a dream now. <laughs> so um, this is the bathroom in the basement, the women's bathroom, which we'd like to extend, which uh, Deborah said that um, I'll be volunteering some time to extend this space into a, a neighboring space. That's the neighboring space now. 
Um, it's, it's been used as a storage area forever. Um, but that's where the bathrooms would extend into. And we'd keep that, that arch um, brick work there. And then, you know, kind of do sort of like that, but not with those pink colors. <laughs> Um, so that, that's it. I, I just wanted to sort of try to make the point that we'd like to finish out the rest of the public spaces so that the whole theater feels like it's um, one cohesive environment. Um, and that includes paint and lighting. And I think that it has a big impact on the people that visit that theater and the image of Northampton too. Um, I think that it will attract, continue to attract more patrons, which means that the theater will continue to make more money and um, support itself over time. So, do you have any questions? Ask me. Any questions for Tom? So I, I guess we'd, we'd like, I, I guess I came here thinking that it would be nice if you all could write us some letter of support if you think that this is a historically significant project. Um, because I think it does help us in many different ways. Um, helps us with grants, it obviously helps us with CPA, um, but it, it helps us across the board trying to raise money for, for these projects. So if, uh, you know, I have to go to Mass Historic to get approval for the, these, these, the rest of the work we're doing. I don't have to get approval for the stuff that we just didn't complete, for the lobby, um, the bathrooms, that stuff. You know, I have to write it all up, give a good description, send it to Mass Historic for their approval. But we're not there right yet. We're, we're just trying to see if we can do this project and get the money to start before we go to Mass Historic. I have no doubt that we will get approval from Mass Historic. They've, they've been very supportive in the past. Um, they've let us do a lot of stuff. And we've given them good uh, project information, very descriptive, so that's why we've gotten support from them. So, but I would like to ask you if you would consider giving us your support to, to continue the preservation work that we're doing there. Apropos of, of, of that, exactly what project are you looking for support on? Um, Complete the auditorium, paint the two lobby spaces, and um, paint the salon. So I think you have the I think you have the list. Yeah, it's, it's all on that list. Uh, yeah. Tom has sent out. Um, so it'll be a letter to the Community Preservation Act that we're going to seek funds for for this. this uh, second question: um, As a historical uh, commission, as you might imagine, we share many of the values that, that you uh, share and that you work on every day, uh, and that's for uh, preservation. Um, and the, the, when I see the term historically related or historically compatible, nine times I I, um, I both applaud that you're trying to do that, and at the same time, the historian in me goes, "Well, how about historically accurate?" Um, uh, <laughs> which means, it, do we is there is there any way to to research what actual um, sconces, colors, um, uh, lighting, et cetera, et cetera, um, were actually there through um, collateral study of, of other buildings under the same architect, or uh, is, is there historiography we, of, well, the, of the, what the was light, in there? The light fixtures we know, since we have samples of what was of there, everything we, that you, we know that what we're, gonna, we're picking is, is very, very close. Yeah. So we have the, the we have the originals that are in the salon, and then we also had uh, an, an original wall scots that um, that we used as an example for um, a replacement. So if you so if, to put it simply, then if you put a replacement sconce or hanging fixture in now, it's it, you have evidence yes that it is extremely close. close. Yes. To what was there. Right. Yes. Right. Because right. you hold the originals. Correct. In yeah. your collection. Correct. Okay. Correct. Are there any that you do not hold or that you don't, uh, you said that the, the, uh, the candelabra in the... Well, in the, I don't know what was originally in the lobby space. Yeah. I, I, yeah. You know, we have a number of newspaper articles that just don't describe. Speak to it. Um, we know that there was a big, massive chandelier in the auditorium 
that was very elaborate. Um, With 76 points of light. And yes. <laughs> are there any, are there any um, avenues of, of research that would, might provide that information? Um, I mean, Deborah did a lot I of research in the 2014 renovation. Mm -hmm. um, we have hand drawings, hand sketches that were in the newspaper of, of, of the theater. They were just black and white yeah. line drawings. So. And there's a description of that, that there was um, not only incandescent light, but gas light as well. There was a, yeah, there was also a fire hydrant stage left uh, to service the gas lamps. So it's a, it's, it was a mixture of both incandescent and gas lamps. I mean, incandescents were fairly new. As, as a matter of fact, Thomas Edison came up to sign off on them because he had did the light. He did the lighting design for the Lyceum Theater in New York, and the art director of the Academy of Music, um, who was the art director of the Lyceum, brought him up to inspect the the um, lights at our space, and he was. Are there comparable uh, theaters uh, by, by the Lyceum? By the well, the Lyceum program. burned down on fourth between twenty second and twenty third. It's now on forty forty second or. Okay, so it's usually yeah. for being so pedantic, apparently, okay. but it's that's our job. Um, yeah. <laughs> and and um, yeah, uh, we don't do it no more. So is, is is there any remaining way to try to ascertain the, the, the historically correct? Uh, fixtures of any that you have any devices that you don't correct. Only the original ones, only the original ones that we have in the salon and the and the sample that we had that was hanging on the wall and a drawing of the chandelier uh, that was in the dome. Is those are the samples that we have. There are there's descriptions in the Gazette. Uh, from the 1891 article that um, has a description of the lights, but it's 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 mainly fluff because they were just so in awe about how many lights that there were that it was. <laughs> but I think it that wasn't a, a detail. The, the samples that we have like that are cast metal. I mean, you can really see the direction they're heading with those. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm very confident that the fixtures we picked are in the same vein. Um, you know. The other avenue to explore, obviously, would be to get custom fixtures that were, were, were made as copies of like, what we have, but that would, you know, cost would boost hidden. the budget up five times. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's one of those. Right. Uh, maybe, I don't know how my colleagues feel, but I would suggest that, that when you use the term historically related, you're kind of halfway there. It's a good, yeah. it's a good direction. Um, sure. But it's, it's, you know, the final point is exact reproductions, and we're not going to get there either. Right. Um, yeah. But we're right. somewhere in between those two, uh, between historically uh, uh, compatible, which yeah. could be almost anything, and and, exa and exact reproductions, which is you could get, but it's out of the budget. Right. Um, so uh, my suggestion is that you, since you are going farther than just this standard, mm -hmm. that you say so in, in this application, uh, because you pay yourself on the back a little bit because you're really trying very hard to to um, provide a you know a close. Uh, facsimile of, of the original. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I would comment. Uh, you know, I have had experience um, in an architectural firm doing restoration, theater restoration, and, uh, and specifically it would be the Paps Theater in Milwaukee, which is about the same generation, mm -hmm. uh, same optical design, and all that. Mm -hmm. And um, we ran into the problems of exactly that—that that you would have one or two original fixtures and everything else had run out for scrap, iron scrap during World War II or something like that. Um, and so the philosophy became find something that is comparable um, and then with the one or two pieces that you have, set them someplace, fix them up so that you can come in and show somebody, oh, that's the original. Look how close we came. Mm -hmm. But to go in there and actually replicate these right. things. Mm -hmm. um, I've talked with other architects who were doing like restoration on state capitals and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they went in and they you know, copied and everything on mm -hmm. you know, particular elements. And it did cost a fortune. Mm -hmm. uh, the only way you could recoup it is if you suddenly had one of the lighting designers say, oh, we're going to accept this and we're going to make them or we're going to sell them to everybody else yeah. in the world. Um, but I think that you know what I'm hearing is a, a valid approach to this. You get as close as you can, mm -hmm. so that the experience of coming into that theater is sort of wow. This looks like it should 
Yeah. It's a theater, yeah. it's illusion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> actually, to, to piggyback on what you were just saying about uh, having a sample uh, for the public to view, is that we were in, wrapped up in this uh, grant as well is uh, the intention to um, put together a permanent exhibit in the salon so that we can have, we have so many amazing documents and, and artifacts such as the original life that we can share with the community. They've just been in this upstairs closet now, you know, just trying to be protected as best we can, but we would like to share them with the full community, you know, the history of the academy. I just have two things. Um, so the, just to follow up on David's questions about um, documentation, this wasn't a um, survey through HABS, was it, through the Historic American Building Survey. Did you no. check that? No. You, you did check that, okay. Um, and just again, uh, from, from the CPC's um, perspective, um, I think they probably will be interested in any kind of efforts that you've made to raise additional funds to yeah. match CPC yeah. funding. Um, well, what we're going to be using is Tom's um, his his time to do the drawings plus our um, I believe our. Um, um, addition of, you know, to do the handicap accessible bathroom. We have, um, right now, we're also having to repla replace 48 light lighting instruments. We just had to replace some others, and now we're caught with a, kind of a safety issue. The, the, the pins are corroding. We have these lighting instruments that they're low size and high size. There's 48 of them, and the, pin, uh, the pins are corroding, so we have to replace those. So. So I, I, some I, of our funds, <laughs> a lot of our funds are having to go into that. I think that, that if you look at the academy, this is only one little project, project. that we're trying to do now. Um, the other one, big one that we're trying to do is a new handicap ramp on the side of the building, yeah. which I've designed. And that's a lot of money, and the city's putting forward the money for that. So if you look at the project as a whole, oh. I think you see many contributing sources. Yeah, um, but, that, that everybody's making a, a contribution. Yeah, so that, I just think casting it in that fashion yeah. would be helpful. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Could be. Or Mechanics Hall in Worcester. Have you been in there lately? Oh, yeah. oh my God. Yeah. I think this would be pictures like that. This, you know, the academy has the potential to, I mean, it already wows people. And I, you know, have, now that, you know, that I work there, I hear a lot of pride um, from the community that the space is open, it's being utilized, and how beautiful it's being uh, maintained and kept. And I think it's, it's had a, a strong impact on this community. We have about 60,000 people now coming through our doors each year. So. But I think going back to your comment about trying to be historically accurate, there is a lot of work left to do in that lot, those two outer lobbies to figure out what the paint colors were there. And I, I haven't started that at all because I don't want to make some big ugly news. Well, let, let me, I don't want to drag this on too long, but I, um, let me say this, I know that you're, you are asking for a letter of, of support yeah. partially in regard to an application which I presume you were preparing for the um, uh, Preservation. Right, the CPA and this is this is not that that, that application. This is a good summary uh, of, of, right, of, of your intention. So we can't, unless we had a an actual application in front of us, we can't specifically endorse that. I know a previous approach to the CPC had included something that we would never uh, technically endorse, which was a bathroom renovation and or expansion in the basement. Which was a wonderful idea from the perspective of a modern theater, but but not it not a the, the CPC can only support preservation efforts, right. not modernization and improvements. Mm -hmm. So, to the extent that that you are, this seems much more focused, and I applaud you for that and I compliment you both. This is much more focused now on on actual preservation efforts, right. um, and if if. We, we can we can support this concept paper. Mm -hmm. I think I can. So I would vote for it. But um, with the understanding that if, to the extent that your if your CPC application ends up being larger, uh, more I think more we're trying to focus on yeah. this. Yeah. Than, than yeah. this yeah. Yeah. To exactly. Yeah. That. Yeah. I think that, that we yeah. have narrowed our focus based on the good, good comments that we've had, and we're trying to narrow it to more historical. Yeah. 
only historically? Um, uh, because I don't, uh, frankly, I, I'm trying to give you good advice here because I don't want you to be turned down by the CPC. Uh, if someone says, hey, wait a minute, we're, we're not supposed to be, you know, you're just improving the theater, we're supposed to be right. uh, legally supporting preservation efforts. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and, um, and perhaps you can speak more clearly well, to that. Well, and that said, you know, the National Park Service defines preservation in four different ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, rehabilitation is one of those. And I think when you don't have sufficient documentation, you know, to show exactly what was there, you don't um, you know what the exact colors were, or the you know the, the um, finish on a ceiling. Um, there is some flexibility uh, in in the sense that you're able to make it um, historically to kind of honor the intent of what was there historically as much as it's known, right. but to make it usable for contemporary and future purposes. Yeah. And so I think you know that is something that we, you know, we have to have some flexibility about that because you can't always know what was there. So, so if, if you would like us to issue, uh, would it be useful then for us to issue you a letter stating that we support your ongoing efforts at the preservation of the interior of the uh, uh, auditorium and salon and lobby of mm -hmm. the uh, of the, of the um, academy to the extent that your efforts are geared towards the um, uh, um, the, the preservation of the, of the theater as it, as it was at the time of construction. Yeah, yeah. that would be nice. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I don't think I see how any of us could have any objection to that. But why don't we, is there a motion to? Bruce, you want to make a motion? I, I was going to say that um, this is the crown jewel of downtown Northampton, mm -hmm. and we really need to support this effort. And um, preservation of a historic building like this is a bottomless pit. <laughs> it's going to keep going on and on and on and As on. As you know well. <laughs> for generations. And so this is an ongoing process. And so what I would say is I think that looking at the direction in which you are aimed and will continue to aim, uh, I think this group should support any kind of effort uh, that is being done. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just want to set it up so that it's, it's, it, right. it passes with, through the CPC. Right. And oh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So I think we're so moved. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. I'll second that. Yeah. Okay. Um, if, if any discussion on that motion? The candidate already. Uh, if there's no discussion, then I'll call the motion. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. We will write you a letter. Thank you. I think I'll, I will um, talk with Sarah when she returns uh, to inform her, and Carolyn will also uh, talk with her um, and uh, about what we need, and we will send that to you. And uh, sort of to whom we may concern, or do you want to address to the CPC? Uh, Oh, the chair. The chair. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Thank you for your support. I'm sorry for putting you to the ringer. I'm just. No, no, that's I'm a friend, I'm a friend of the theater, and I'm trying to shape the application no, no. so that it, it's, it's successful. And, and it doesn't look like a, the grab bag of general improvements, but is instead this wonderful collection of, of preservation efforts. So um, I, I hope. Oh, I appreciate the, yeah. the focus and. and yeah, it's will lead to more success that way. I understand the importance of it. So. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Uh, I, I apologize to those members of the audience who are uh, not, uh, who have been delayed, um, but uh, thank you for your patience and I hope you learned as much as I did um, <laughs> in the process. Um, the next item on our agenda is a public hearing to determine whether 236 South um, Street in Northampton, map ID 38B-245 should be considered preferably preserved pursuant to Chapter 161 of the City Code and whether a demolition delay period should be imposed. Is there someone here to present on the issue of the demolition delay uh, request or a demolition consideration for 236 South Street? Thank you, Chairman. Thank you for, uh, for having me. My name is Ben Lewis. I'm the current owner at 236 South Street. It's a pleasure to uh, meet and re-meet some of you. Um, sitting along with me is John Landry, uh, the architect who uh, we have brought on to help us design this process. 
Um, I became the owner of 236 South Street about a year and a half ago uh, as part of an uh, express effort to try and continue to add multifamily housing to uh, our investment portfolio, as well as to try and bring the type of housing that um, we are here in Northampton wants and needs to the area. Uh, in the time that we've owned this property at South Street, we've made ongoing regular maintenance, um, but beginning in about October, uh, with the uh, insight and guidance from professionals, engineers, and architects, uh, to try and really address some of the, the systemic issues, the foundation. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of real really wrong with the building. Um, significant electrical will need to be updated. Uh, the roofing was done, I think, four or five years ago, but was done in a way that the roofing would need to be redone. Um, every time that we go in to repair an issue from a leaky toilet from years and years of mismanagement from before we took ownership, uh, we're afraid of what happens every time we open up the wall. We've had mold remediation specialists coming in. Um, and so we are at the, at the process right now where we're hoping to be able to, um, uh, to take down the building and to put up more suitable uh, multifamily housing uh, within you know walking distance to downtown um, to be able to provide the people who are coming and choosing this as their city uh, a place that's comfortable and safe and really desirable to live. Okay. Um, other questions? Um, our our main um, charter is not to uh, make it easier for building owners to. I mean, you have to forgive me because I'm not talking I'm unsympathetic to it because I'm a homeowner too and I, I know how expensive they can be. But it's not to save money for homeowners, it's to preserve the star fabric of, of, of the city. Um, as you're well aware, the, city, the, the building does have a certain historical uh, connection to uh, being one of the first social welfare uh, facilities in the, in the city prior to the beginning of Cooley Dickinson and um, and and it has stood up remarkably well since its, uh, its construction um, and it's now uh, from the looks of it when I went past this afternoon until about five or, or um, by four uh, households um, and it seems like a, a, a multi-family use to me um, why we, and we don't generally, as an historical commission, we generally don't like tearing down, we don't like to see the old buildings get torn down. Um, why tear it down? Why not, re, yeah. why not reuse? Why not fix? Sure. I mean, not, I certainly, we all know a building with not been wiring that have been inexpensively and effectively rewired. We know of, of field some basements that have been uh, waterproofed, et cetera, et cetera. Why, why tear it down and not fix it up? I think that, no, I appreciate the question. I think because for me, uh, I would rather, I wish that it were one of these beautiful old buildings that we would have the opportunity to update on the inside and, and, and bring up with regards to uh, the, the resident experience of you know, higher end kitchens or bathrooms as one would do in a single family home. Um, there, the, the history behind the building um, I, I think is notable. Where, at least the way that we looked at the building when looking at it, it doesn't read as a significant, historical, beautiful space. I know that um, one of the questions that uh, Sarah had presented to me was a question about the, the streetscape. And it was one that I, I sort of took seriously. I, had to, I drove by a few times, took pictures, and I wanted to try and get a sense of what that meant. And I honestly felt there that there wasn't a streetscape. It's not like driving on on mine in the other direction. It's not like looking at other other of the really beautiful areas within town on, uh, over by the YMCA on the massive side. Um, over there on South Street, it seemed to me that this was an opportunity to take a, a building that is falling apart, that is having significant structural concerns, um, and improve the lot to, to improve the experience. If this was a building that I think was beautiful on the outside and needed repairs, uh, I, I think our approach would have been different and we would have been happier to say, wow, look at this uh, restoration project we did. And, and you know, similar to, to uh, obviously a much smaller uh, scale to what the Academy of Music was discussing. Um, 
this isn't a building that is beautiful. This isn't a building that has notable architectural features. This isn't a building that has, uh, in, in my estimation, the best of what Northampton's history is. This is a building that had that a very long time ago, and for the last, who knows how long, 50 to 100 years, hasn't really been, been, done, been used under that service. And um, for, for me, you know, our family moved to town to about little, over two years ago. Um, this is our new home. And, and for me, every day, when we drive by the places where we live and where we work, uh, I like for things to be beautiful. I like for things to be um, appropriate to what the town is offering. And, uh, and so part of what we're uh, discussing as part of our architectural drawings are ways in, in order to take this building down and to put up um, a, a structure that is significant and reflects the, the community that's around it. As, as you might guess, um, many people say there's always a streetscape. Uh, it, it, it may vary uh, it, uh, from one end of a street to another or one town to another, but there's, there's always a streetscape of some sort. Um, and it, it often is not a streetscape of, of uh, in, speaking generally, uh, of, of, of uh, homes that are stellar. Many, most streets have just homes that were built uh, by, by people who wanted homes. There are streets of very, very modest homes and streets of middle class homes and sometimes streets of, of uh, quite uh, elaborate homes. They're all streetscapes and, and, and they all are part of uh, Northampton. Um, and um, so we are here not to necessarily preserve only certain key singular homes or buildings around the city, but also to preserve the streetscapes that are. Um, and we can all see neighborhoods, sections of streets where something has come in and doesn't fit with the neighbors at all, without being specific, there are there are buildings um, uh, along South Street that um, that might fit that uh, uh, that category, and those are true disruptions of, of a streetscape. Even though what they what was torn down was probably a modest home um, at some point. So again, our our um, you know the, the situation is this: we can't prevent the demolition of any building outside of the uh, historic district. Uh, nor do we want to vex building owners in their plans and efforts to to proceed with with uh, development. Uh, we're certainly not anti-development. It is our responsibility, however, to talk with owners about options and alternatives and mediation to see whether there is any way that features of the existing building might be made use of uh, in new plans uh, because. It, New construction doesn't always have to be total destruction mm -hmm. of the prior building. Um, streetscapes do change uh, a lot when when in, when buildings that are quite atypical or, or of, of marginal architectural merit are suddenly inserted into what was previously a pleasant uh, 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 residential uh, row of, of buildings. Um, I think you know what I'm, what I'm saying. So our our hope is to is to engage in a dialogue with you, and and to say is is it really necessary to take everything down? The building's been added on, so it looks like uh, at least once. Yeah. Um, uh, maybe some of that can be changed. Is there some way to look at it at the facade of the building as something that could be preserved? Whereas behind that, uh, going back in the lot, um, and it seems to be an odd shape, but but. The size of the lot mm -hmm. uh, behind that, uh, the, the uh, there, there's space for in, uh, ingenuity and, and uh, architectural interest. Um, is there is there any room for dialogue in this, or is this yeah. or, is this an ad? I mean, is this a proposal where you're just dedicated to tearing everything down and starting? Well, I appreciate the the willingness and desire to hear from you of what um, what is most significant in your opinion. Uh, and I think that the, the in looking at the building from the outside and certainly from the inside, it doesn't feel significant. I don't think that the architecture 
in its current state is significant. I think that the the way that it has been uh, modified over the years has stripped it of any in, in architectural value. Um, and but when I was there earlier today, I was noticing that that red door is a really beautiful door. Mm -hmm. And so the question is, is that, no, I think, I, 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 your point is well taken, and I think that um, trying to hear from you about what you consider to be significant about this building uh, would, would be helpful for us as we're, as we're moving forward with our plans. Mm -hmm. um, if it's simply noting that on this site once stood the original um, home that became the Lathrop home, then I think that you know that would certainly be something that may add value to the the development moving forward, and and maybe there's some uh, imagery badging something that's done to note this as uh, form you know formerly the site of that, but it hasn't been delayed for home in many years. It hasn't been utilized mm -hmm. in, in servicing those those same purposes um, in some time. So I, I would love to hear from you. Yeah, I, I can comment a bit on this. I, I did walk past it a couple of times and. You kind of peeked in windows and looked at some of the detail. Um, it's been severely compromised as far as its architectural character. The addition of the, the porch or the whatever it was that added to the front uh, probably destroyed most of the facade, the detailing. Uh, applying the, uh, I guess it's aluminum siding, um, whenever you do that, you lose a lot of the trim and everything like that. And if you're talking about creating um, affordable housing as opposed to simply more apartments, condos, or whatever they're called, um, that probably you would be well priced out of, you know, whatever the market is here in town um, to go into a restoration project. I, I thought I noticed some foundation problems and goodness knows you've probably got all mechanical stuff. It is pretty nasty. Therefore, my concern um, is really the new design what you're proposing is it going to be a good neighbor design in that area um you know we're, we're talking about something that would be comparable in bulk comparable in form comparable in materials uh, so that as you drive by you're not looking at um you know a, a mouth with missing teeth you know that's always a classic example or something that is totally inappropriate. And that's not to say that it, you, you can't consider good contemporary design, um, but good contemporary design that is a good neighbor design is something that uh, to me would be very important. And not being a historic district, we can't really say, well, show us what you're doing and we'll pass judgment on that. But I think that uh, you know, working with your architect uh, you know what I'm talking about when mm -hmm. I say good neighbor yeah, design. Absolutely. Um, you know, unless you're Frank Gehry coming in with a 21st century landmark, you know, let's work with something that looks like more. Yeah, I, I agree. That. I mean, for for 150 years, there's been a, a, a gable entrance, three over two. Yeah. They call it Italian A, but it looks it, yeah. it looks like near classical revival to me. But it's been uh, uh, it's been sitting there, and it's it's a it's a form the detail stripped. It's a tired, worn house, clearly. Mm -hmm. It's seen a lot of use. Uh, it, it's been institutional. It's been now all the family. Um, and I'm, I'm certainly not pretending as if this is a uh, showpiece of, 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 of uh, 19th century um, woodworking. It's not at this point. But it is a form. It's a, it's a, um, it has a volume there that would be great to see replicated uh, if if a new building is going to be um, uh, erected there, and and having the confidence to know that the new design, although we don't have purview over it, but if we have some sense that the new design is is, is not going to be shocking in its in the filling of the form of what is previously there, would and it can be holding true to the, the place of that, that and the volume that that building has has held up to this point um, certainly would be of interest to, to sure. us, I think, in, in, in our determination of, uh, 
um, credit the, the, the demolition delay or no demolition delay on, on this thing. Um, our, our, uh, again, we're not passing judgment on yeah. your final design, but and I don't want to get there, but I, but I, I want to get as close to that <laughs> as we can because we're, it, it does impact how we look at the, sure. any request to tear down a 150-year-old building in town. Yeah. Mr. Craig. I met Lewis a few years ago when he called me to look at a five-family house in another part of town that was, was much more deficient than this one, too. This one, I'm sure this one's deficient as well. But the interesting thing, I'm not sure if you know this, that that Ward 4 South Street neighborhood, I've sold a lot of houses there over the years, and it's the most magical neighborhood in the city in terms of how they're interconnected. And I think I think it would be good for you to get onto the listserv mm -hmm. there. And, and I don't want to be, if we're going to, allow this to be just taken down. I think I think they should have an opportunity to weigh in on it. I really, in my heart of hearts, do. Because just for the public participation and the later on down the road as the new house gets built there, even if we block this for a year, we've had other projects get blocked for a year and when the clock struck 12, that building was down in hours. Yeah. And so we don't want to have to have right. an ugly scene you're, like that. You're saying, but I, I'll never forget. I heard for this this poor man. Um, I, I I always I mean I support what you're saying. I always think that it's good to talk with neighbors. Right. It, as as a formality, mm. we we're the the agency of, of approval or not. Um, and I don't mean to say that you have to talk. I don't want to, to imply that you have to go get approval from neighbors who no. um, are are um, historically. Neighbors in general, I don't speak about this property in specifically, but neighbors are averse to change. So, um, uh, um, you know. I just have to say very quickly in response to your point, uh, your, uh, our, our goals are, are aligned with regards to ensuring that this isn't a, some new modern monstrosity that's going to totally take over the neighborhood, the street. That's not, that's not one of our goals. I spent, uh, the last two weeks taking pictures of my favorite houses around town to be able to share both color schemes and patterns and uh, you know the little fish scale detailing to see what makes sense. I also don't want it to look cheesy or hokey so that it looks like you know a house built in you know a, a, a apartment area built in 2018 that's supposed to look like 1850 but I think that there are, are um, really beautiful examples around town um, including one right on um, on uh, on Elm Street right that sold a little bit over a year ago. Um, Stafford Construction did the 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 work on the on that house, no, the no. Main Street, 392, 492, something yeah, like that. No, no. Uh, so we've, I, based on what I noticed from his work, I, I reached out to John and asked for him to, to be the builder on this project. So uh, assuming that everything goes uh, well, I didn't want to just sort of get in on this on a, on a willy-nilly thing. This is not the idea, is, to, is not to try and flip this over and sell it and, and cash out. This is a long-term play for, for us and for our family, for Northampton. Um, and, and it is our goal not to uh, do whatever we have to do so that, you know, when it becomes our turn to move, we can do that and sort of say, you know, we don't really care about everyone else's opinion around us. That's, that's not who I am. It's not, it's not the work that we do. Uh, Carolyn gave us a very similar uh, recommendation in the meeting uh, that we had, uh, sort of a pr preliminary meeting in January. Um, where she said, you know, she and the others around the table said, you know, what, you're, what you've done looks great and sort of feels um, uh, ethically following the, the laws and codes that are set up, but you should talk with the, with the locals. You should talk to the people who are in that area and who are going to be uh, immediately impacted. And, and so uh, I think that it's a, very, it's a very valid recommendation. I'll also add that John Landry is, is a very good architect, builder. He does things nicely. So when I see I'm going to be here. fair like a teacher in, you know, in a class. I Barbara, we haven't heard from you. Neither have I. And I agree. Neither have I. And I just, I feel that I have to advocate somewhat for the actual building that's there mm -hmm. now, which I understand is in poor condition and has been stripped of a lot of its, um, the detail and, the, and, and the, the way it used to look. But as I'm reading this inventory sheet from Mass Historic Commission, 
it just seems to me that the cultural and social history of this and of the actual building that's there now is, is very important in Northampton. And I feel as if this was, um, it, it, it just represents something, you know, a modest house that was then added to, and added to really within 20 years of its building to become this home for the sick, a charitable, where this claims it's the first charitable, private charitable institution in Northampton. And then it was expanded in 1888 and became, and was later named the Lather Home, which of course we know that now is a different location on South Street. But I feel as if, I, I'm, I mean, this happens, I understand, but I'm, I'm never really happy with the plaques that say, here stood, this is the site of, when, if it's at all possible to actually say this is the site of, but it's the actual building. And to me, is, I mean, again, I haven't been inside to know what the, that condition is, but to me, I can look at this and see, if you just open up that porch, it would be a tremendous improvement. I mean, again, I don't, and it says, I know that it was saying that probably it was enclosed in the 20th century, but I don't know when the front porch was added. It just says it was enclosed probably in the, in the mid 20th century, but most of it's really been there for more than a um, hundred years in the form that it's in. And again, because of this cultural significance, it just, I, I can't, I can't wrap my head around actually seeing the physical building that's there now go away. Martha? Yeah, and I, I would just echo everything Barbara said. I absolutely agree with her. And, uh, you know, a couple things about this. Um, one of those concerns I have to raise is just that we have, uh, we have allowed the demolition, I want to say allowed, uh, several structures recently, one of which was on South Street. It was one of the last in-town barns mm -hmm. um, that we allowed a, a business to demolish to make way for parking, and, and they then moved. the they moved. And they moved. So we've lost that structure. It's gone. And um, so I guess you know I feel a little gun shy about just sort of signing off on this kind of thing because you know faith is we don't know, right? Um, I do though. Um, support David's concept of trying to work within at least a piece of the structure. And I, I can say this from experience because that's the house that I live in. Our house was a stable and it had a lot of junky additions on it when we bought it. We took them off and we saved the stable piece of it and renovated that and then built around it. So it can be done. And I think if you're trying to preserve a cultural history, which I agree with Trevor, is very important. Um, I would really strongly urge you to explore that. If, you know, if preserving the entire structure is just cost prohibitive, I would really encourage you to explore that. Just a quick side note, and then I'll get to root. This, this also is, this, this building is on one of the busiest, most observed mm -hmm. residential streets in the city, so in a sense, the, the bar is a little higher to preserve it. It's not it's, uh, it's tucked away somewhere that no one will, I don't know, call the sack that no one will ever see. Yeah, I, I would comment on that, and I, I think the association with uh, the Lathrop um, concern uh, is what I call the invisible history. Uh, and it's, you know, George Washington slept here, that kind of thing. You, you can't restore that experience of George Washington having lived there. But you can study it, you can commemorate it, and maybe it has to be a plaque or a marker or something like that. Um, my biggest concern is the appropriateness of the new design. And so I, I would yeah. offer to you and your architect a tool, which are the design guidelines for our Elm Street Historic Overlay District. And on page 24, there are all kinds of guidelines for new construction uh, that talk about site consideration, scale, massing, um, you know, proportions, height, roof shape, fenestration, building materials, and all of that. So I would think that from a preservation point of view, from a cityscape point of view, that a brand new structure coming in that was designed with these things mm -hmm. in mind, and I agree with you that uh, you don't want to create a storybook type environment, um, you, you want to create something that is a 2018 building 
but again, a good neighbor. So I would recommend reading this. Is this online so that, yeah. okay. Um, so I'll just hand it to you so that you can see what it is to get the reference. Um, but um, I, I think absent a historic district designation, we can't really say. We want to see what we're going to do before we can say. I, 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 well said. I, uh, yeah. real quick, real quick. Go ahead. Go ahead. I just want to add to one thing to that, too, about the neighborhood. I think that one of the uh, beauties of South Street is it's just eclectic. You know, it is not one style of architecture. Actually, most of Northampton isn't one style of architecture, except for maybe Hospital Hill or excuse me, Village Hill. Um, and uh, so, you know, uh, <clears throat> there are some very, very old structures on that street that probably date to the 1700s, and then there's some more modern yeah. ones, and there's some old businesses that are there. And I think that the, that diversity is part of its character, and that needs to be acknowledged. So. Um, the simplicity of the structure is the vernacular quality of it. I think really, mm -hmm. it fits in very well with the streetscape. I don't mm -hmm. see that as an issue. I, I what I want to do is pull back a little bit, and talk about demo delays, and, I, and, and explain that demo delays are, are are not one of two things. They're not punitive. They're not meant to to punish or to vex the the homeowner, the the, 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 the building owner, and they're also not magical. We're not, in, we don't, it's not for us to impose a, a, a demo delay with the vague, unrealistic hope that some change will happen in the course of a year and then walk away at the end, you know, 366 day. Um, they're meant to be, or kind of a roll up your sleeves period and, and talk with one another and say, is there something that could be done that would preserve this whole structure or preserve the essence of it or preserve the volume or the scale or something of it and in and, and, and so doing preserve the integrity of the, of the neighborhood and the city um, that we can talk about or think about or percolate about for for a while and maybe we can come to a resolution sooner uh, than the allowed 180 uh, 360 days maybe we can maybe this you know we can arrive at a resolution pretty quickly and, and and in that case I think probably we've seen I've seen the committee uh, the commission uh, vote to terminate to, to end a, a, dealt, a delay sooner because they feel like all of the issues have been dealt with and addressed and, and uh, so it in that case uh, everyone's been happy because you know perhaps the building hadn't been torn down or perhaps uh, uh, there can be uh, appropriate architectural salvage of, of, of some uh, uh, key elements of, of a building that would not have been otherwise salvaged or uh, documentation that would not have occurred otherwise so um, in those cases, we have allowed uh, demolition sooner, but it's always been because we feel that the, that the owner is, a, is working with us to the very best uh, uh, way possible. We're well aware that uh, at the end of the year, uh, if nothing has happened, then the building is coming down. But we'd rather not, we don't want to punish an owner by going out that way. We'd, we'd like to have there be a dialogue and have there be a creative uh, uh, agreement on how on what's going to happen is there any you're, you're the owner yeah is there any are you open to to having a dialogue with this i'm certainly open to having a dialogue um as i i, I don't quite i don't feel like i have a complete understanding yet of what you feel is important if it's the architectural structure or if it's the lathrop significance the yeah, we've heard both yeah we heard, you're right we've heard both uh, and so in order for us to meet and try and think a little bit more broadly and, and really come to a solution that, that works and is respectful to, I mean, we're here not as a matter of course, but we're here because this is our, uh, our first time doing this in this area. And, okay. and I wanted, I was delighted to go second because I wanted to sort of see uh, how you responded uh, with the Academy of Music. Uh, it's clear to me that, that the purpose is the improvement, not uh, we don't want anything to happen. And so, um, I guess it would just be helpful for me to hear what what you feel is most important. Well, let me let me if 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 you I'm trying to approach it very logically. If you are dedicated to significant change to the building, which is your right after a year, um, then the original construction of the building that was the first Lathrop home is gone, uh, and and the only way to commemorate that is through 
through some sort of a, a, a you know, tablet or sign or something mm -hmm. like that. But so in a sense, if if changes in the, if, if that really going to happen, then that is not going to we're not going to serve that concern by putting a, a block on yeah. any work because if, if at the end of the year sure. you'll take it down sure. record ball. But if it is if the issue is the the building role in the in the in the, the fabric of that of the street, uh, if there's something significantly if there's a facade going in there that's significantly different than what's there now, it will stand out and will yeah. be a detriment to to that neighborhood. And uh, there, I mean, not to be too specific, but they're they're, they're building further along. It's a you know a modern apartment building with a faux mansard um, uh, roof, um, sort of a. Uh, that, that, that runs uh, uh, perpendicular to the street, and it is quite notable uh, uh, every time one, one passes it without, passing, without making judgment on it, but it's notable. And it's certainly notable for its non-originality. Is, is there some way that we could talk about a building of yours that would replicate the form and, and volume and general you know, sort of gable end of appearance of the existing building, um, so that it is uh, not an eyesore, uh, so that it, it, it can keep the historic patina of, of that street. Could I just speak to, to that? So um, Ben went around the town and collected a bunch of photos of different properties that he liked, and and one of them that kind of stood out was the. The building on the corner of uh, South Street, right by the Academy of Music. It's a multi-family. I think it's like the four units. It's got some Victorian features, oh, yeah. and turrets, and so. Oh yeah. Yeah, and so that that's kind of where we're we're headed. Like something with uh, maybe leaning towards some historic features, but you know, Carolyn had even Victorian multi-family. Yeah, oh, they got yeah. CPA funding. Store. It's gray with gold and yeah. yeah. It has a lot of across the hall. Detail. detail, a lot of detail. Yeah. Yeah. It's across the hall. No. The old home. Nod to the historic nature of the building, but it would be totally different. Um, I love old buildings. Um, I live in a 125 year old house right on North Elm Street that I totally gutted and <laughs> renovated. Yeah, God bless you. Spent <laughs> a, a ton of money on, and this building. From a construction and architecture standpoint, it, it's totally shot. There's to to just repair it. It's probably five hundred thousand. So it's the foundation's crumbling. It has a, a dirt floor in the basement. It's wet. Um, it, um, it has not and tube wiring in it. It doesn't it doesn't need fire code. The plumbing shot electrical. It, the outside is who knows what's under the vinyl siding. Um, the roof has multiple layers. The trim's rotted. I totally appreciate the historic fact that it was a woman's um, home to, at the beginning, but there's nothing architecturally that I would even consider salvaging in that building. I don't. I don't see any architectural significance. Yeah, I didn't see it either. Oh, yeah. right? So, so the thought of it, I, I appreciate the whole. The start of the Lathrop community, and but how do you how do you work that into you know a new design? Well, I'm sure you'll you'll notice I wasn't talking about pref, you know uh, preferential uh, salvaging, uh, and I and I wasn't necessarily talking about uh, doc, uh, photographic documentation because I'm sure there's not you know the, the construction in that building is probably not you know not at all unusual or uh, or, or uh, no worthy. But it, what, what we're left with is the volume it fills, uh, the, the the form that it, you know the shadow it casts on on the sidewalk, and as you drive by, it you know we would want to see that it that something that's there is conforms to the fabric of, of that street because we're preserving, as as my colleague has frequently said, we we, we like to preserve places, not just specific buildings. Sure. Um, so, 
I, I was just going to note that the proposed um, sort of the way that the applicant has been moving the direction is for something that's not a single family home, obviously it's a four family now, but any new construction that's not a single family home will trigger a planning board review. And so that's one of the reasons why we've had initial conversations with the applicant about mm -hmm. that. So that sort of speaks to the concern about reaching out to the neighborhood and sort of making sure the neighborhood understands this is going forward, but it also means that um, under the criteria for the planning board, they will have to submit detailed design. The design standards aren't stringent by any stretch of the imagination and can't dictate that they pick a certain style. Um, but what it does mean is that those, uh, those materials are going to be submitted. It may also provide an opportunity for you to weigh in with recommendations to the planning board about the design. Um, and that, so there is sort of this process that will be coming forward. So how would that work? Would the planning board come back to us to ask, or? Well, probably what I would say is, you know, if your recommendation is, you know, if you just, I think also you probably need to take some kind of vote on whether the building architecture or elements of the architecture need to be preserved, or if it's a space thing, an, an invisible thing, or an acknowledgement of this um, social and cultural importance in Northampton. But sort of, sort of that. So if you make that decision, I think that you could um, certainly make it known that you would like to review the plans. We could certainly make sure that the committee gets the plans ahead of time so that you have the opportunity to submit your comments and recommendations to the planning board. Not that the planning board, they, they don't have, um, you know, legal weight, but it certainly would help the board in understanding what so may be a concern given that the buildings being, the original buildings being torn down. What we, you know, my takeaway is we, we are not uh, the final arbiters of, of the approval of the replacement buildings. But we are the arbiters of the destruction of a building that you, you would like to <laughs> remove to, so that you could put a new building there. Um, and and our window of operation is anywhere from zero to 365 days. And we really hate going to 365 days. Um, and we have historically, after discussions and, and conversations with with uh, applicants had shorter time periods if we were convinced that the, the best possible resolution was at hand uh, for the, in the application. And that's taken various forms. Um, can, what can you, can you talk with us about what you could do to help us see that this is, a, that, that, you, that, this, that people charged with the preservation of the historical buildings of, of Northampton and this fabric of Northampton uh, are doing their jobs uh, uh, appropriately. Can, how, can, how can we work with you and you, you with us? Yeah, uh, and I think um, for me trying to understand what's really important about this home uh, will help us guide our process so that we cherish that. I, I'm, not, I'm not looking to to just write over you know 150 years worth of history. Uh, I also don't necessarily think that just because history once happened there, but hasn't been happening for 100 years, that it's always that something that needs to be uh, maintained in that way. Um, so I'm happy to take another look through the home to see if there are noticeable uh, architectural details. Even I if it's something. Yeah, I don't think we're going to find the details. I really don't. Right. Uh, it, again, I, I, there are houses in town that are, that are like that. Maybe the, I've, I've, I've missed them. In, in this case, I think what we're, I think a lot of the details have just either were never there or they were taken away by various changes. The issue is, I think, going to be volume, general appearance, mm -hmm. sense of curiosity, curiosity mm -hmm. of, of being. It, it is. It, it fits with the neighborhood. Yeah. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be an, an old looking building eventually that you put up, but it does mean that, that it needs not to, um, I mean, work, if we become satisfied that what your, your project is, comports with the architectural values, put it that way, and form and bulk and, and volume don't necessarily imply a certain style of architecture, 
Um, but but if we sent, have a sense that you are handling all that responsibly, then then we certainly can act more quickly, which will I think facilitate planning, or at least it'll it'll, it'll coordinate well with the planning uh, departments or, or com committees uh, review of you. Yeah, yeah. I just had a question of staff. It's, uh, instead of making a decision that it um, and you're placing a demolition delay on it, uh, obviously. Our biggest concern is we don't quite know what's going to happen. Um, your biggest concern is that you've got a project that you want to move ahead on. We'd like to work together on that. And maybe it's a sort of, if it's possible to, say, table a decision, uh, meet again at our next meeting, and by that time you'll probably have some schematics or you'll be able to review the guidelines and you can give us a better comfort level as to what's going to go there in its place. Um, I mean, that would make me feel a little more comfortable yeah. if we had some. I mean, I can, I can talk about it. I, I thought I saw some drawings over yeah. there, but maybe not. Um, mm -hmm. So the, the neighbor, uh, Ben's neighbor uh, on Olive Street, it's a commercial odd building, single story. Mm -hmm. So he, he has that under contract right now um, the separate building? The oh. separate building. He's kind of tying it up so that we can move forward with combining the two properties into one. Mm -hmm. And in so doing, that would give us, um, it's Ben's Pardon property. Pardon me, this is that little one-story building behind it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. So Ben's prob property alone mm -hmm. is this, it's kind of a flag lot. It's mm -hmm. kind of an odd shape. Mm -hmm. uh, but with the other property, it would allow us to have some parking off of Olive Street in the back. So basically, we have a corner lot, and what our design intent was to define the street edge on both South and Olive, so turn the corner with units, and then have the parking in the back, and have it kind of fenced off uh, from the neighbors, um, and then I have a park, an internal park for the residents. So bicycle friendly, walkable mm -hmm. to downtown. Well, you're making, you're saying all the right things, and, and I, I, I like I like those ideas. Um, again, it's not our role to pass. We can't take the, the, the planning uh, commission's role and don't intend to. So we're not we wouldn't be passing judgment on the specific design, but we would. It is our role to protect neighborhoods and and to protect specific buildings um, for as long as we can, uh, which in this case is is not. Perpetuity. Um, so, um, to the extent that you're willing to continue working with us, I think you can hear that we really want to help out, and we really we're not trying to be six in the mud here. Uh, we, we we understand the dynamic, and and um, I, I, development has to occur, but um, we like it, whatever goes in there, to fit with the rhythm and the and the, the, the scale and the forms. That are that are already existent in the in the neighborhood. There's a wide variety, so it doesn't have to, it has a, it doesn't have to yeah. be one thing or another. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but it has to be something that comports with that yeah. South Street neighborhood. Yeah, absolutely. And if you're willing to work with us on that, we're willing to slot you into every meeting we have, uh, and 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 you know, uh, and, and help out in any way we possibly can, um, including a, writing a letter of recommendation uh, or, or you know commendation uh, if we can get to that point. Quickly. So just before I get off the podium, if that's okay, I want to make sure that I really understand what you feel you want to hear from us. I'm hearing, uh, understanding the size and scale of the of the proposed new building uh, with regards to neighbors and the streetscape feel. Um, and if there is any way to make some type of accommodation for anything that's on the property as it currently sits, uh, we're happy to look into that. Mm -hmm. and, and just so that I, I totally understand, too, you're also proposing to remove the existing five-bay five garage? Yes. Good. Okay. And what about yeah. in the Stucco building, too, right? That's, That's a separate right. property. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, I mean, for a, a big part of it is the, that that building is a real high sword, the, the building behind it's on the building on Olive Street. Uh, so there's very limited parking that's in there, and for us, it just it feels like an opportunity to start fresh and design properly, um, and being respectful to the neighborhood and 
taking guidance from what else Northampton has to offer, I think is certainly um, well within reason. Is there, um, are there other comments or additions? Uh, my, um, and I'm not sure how, how much you're parliamentary on this, in this uh, particular field, we could either um, declare this uh, preferably preserved, uh, but with a, with a clear statement and, and uh, sincere statement that we're willing to, to um, give permission for demolition at any point as soon as we've met those the standards, um, or we could uh, simply sort of table uh, your table the request until our next meeting and, and not take any action on it at all. It's, it's kind of up to, you know, truly it's up to you. Uh, um, we we just want more dialogue, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, if you'd like to come back and show us what what you're thinking of and along the, the ways we, we've already discussed, then I, I see no reason to nail it down as a, as a rejection of the application currently, and we just sort of keep it open and have a little bit more dialogue. So if you can let us know what you want. It's called trust and verify. So then your next meeting, it would I think, would be March 26th, yeah. right? Yeah. So, so this month, yeah. now, let me, to, in the spirit of fairness, um, if you were to ask for a decision right now, then 365 days come sooner. Uh, so you might want to ask for us to do a, a determination right now, because then you'd be able to get out from under the, the demo delay uh, at the at the other end right. sooner. I want to make sure you're aware. No, I, I, I understand. Uh, so we're talking like three weeks from today, basically. Yeah. The next, yeah. The next meeting. It's always the. Um, it's usually the rest. The other piece of it though would be 365 days, or you could say unless. You know, you approved or replaced the design. Oh, that's, I've been, yeah, I've been trying to say that frequently yeah. today, tonight. Uh, that's we, always the that's, a, that's the outside limit. Our, our goal and our preference is always to do a shorter one when we've reached some kind of a, agreement. That, that, that it, as much as, as much has been done as is possible in mm -hmm. a given situation, then there's no point to delaying the, the uh, demo at that point. Um, okay, so, uh, Based on my experience here and in hearing your um, individual voices and the group voice as well, I think that uh, maybe get, give us a couple of weeks and that way we'll be able to, I think, return showing you that we're already on the same page and now you'll have drawings to be able to assign to that instead of just words. Very good. You've been very straight up with us and we yeah. appreciate that. Uh, very, very, uh, very transparent. We appreciate that. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Appreciate it. We'll see you soon. Great. See you soon. Um, have a motion. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll move to uh, continue this discussion uh, on Monday, whatever you said, what, 26? 26. Yeah. Second. Question. Yeah. And at 5.30. There being no discussion, we'll take the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah. Motion carries. Um, now, if we can get the St. John's uh, uh, folks to stop their endless talking. And, uh, <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah. We apologize, and we thank you for your patience, but as an architect, you've probably been to meetings that took more, far longer than this one. So, so I'm um, a representative from St. John's Episcopal Church, one of the parishioners there, and I'm the uh, building committee there. So what we're here for, for is to ask for a letter of support for our variance to not have to do any facade work um, for the handicapped accessibility. So we have the support of um, the city, we don't, I don't have the letter in hand, but in, uh, the Center for Independent Living has um, given us a letter of support and the one from the state is in the works, but I guess we need the, you guys to be on board as well to um, put our application into the Boston. Now, if we recall, that this this um, entrance, this accessible entrance, is facing the Smith campus, or well, there'll, there'll be another new one there, but there is already a accessible entrance facing Elm Street. It's, it goes into the little connector building from oh, the okay. parish house and right. the church. So there's a, a ramp that yeah. tracks that's been built to bring grade up, you know, and that's been in place. 
for 20 years, I think. Ago. So the, the variance is so that you don't have to alter the facade of the building, like the right. front door. Right, the front door. Sure. Wait, those, which those we looked at that the last right. time, yeah. or the time we turned down, and we realized it's, you know, it, it was a very complicated yeah. with oh, yeah. um, urns and, yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. It would really kind of disrupt that whole scene there. Yeah, but they're big, like 50 inch wide door, double. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you've you got know, the steps and then right. the big the urns. Yes. Yeah. Right. Um, so is the long term plan to keep that steel ramp or is that going to go away when you do the the access at the rear? But no, I think that we would keep that. We okay. would want as much handicapped accessibility as we possibly could have. And is that going to get altered at all, or is it going to remain not, in this too? Not in this plan. I mean, there's dreams to bring grade up and eliminate having to have a structure and have. You That's know, what I mean, the structure. Yeah. 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 So, you know, just to bring the ground grade, because we're only going up three steps. Mm -hmm. so, so, from a landscape point of view, there seems to be inches. some energy to just bring our landscape up yeah. to that side and have no physical yeah. structure. Yeah, that's the right thing to do. Right. But yeah. that wasn't in this particular project yet. Okay. You know, so. But that's, that's been the dream. If, you know, as, as projects happen, you end up with what we have to do and what we wish we could be doing. Mm -hmm. So that they want to have some kind of a, of a, just a landscape mm -hmm. thing, so there isn't structure. Yep, OK. If only we had someone expert at that. Well, you know, so that I think long term that's going to be a huge improvement. Yeah. And I think yeah, having that um, and then retaining the integrity of the front of that building, which is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to eliminate some of the blacktop. Now that's paved yeah. right up to that yes. connector building. So, Martha, we have to, I mean, I have to rely heavily on your, on your thoughts and your insights on this. What do you think? I think that we should support it um, because I, d I really do think that. Um, I haven't studied it in detail. I don't know if you have Bruce either, but I, from what I saw in the photographs and what I know of it, it's it would be very. I think it would really alter the um, the main entrance to that building, which is just so prominent. It's such a prominent feature in the district, and mm -hmm. um, so I think if, if the long term plan is to remove that steel ramp and just make the access there more seamless with the building structure, I think that's great. Yeah, I so, so I would move on. Okay. <laughs> I'm okay with it. Okay. Please, okay. okay. not tearing anything down. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I know because we love the structure too. So I right. believe we'll that with a motion. I believe that was a second. Um, I'll call it a vote. Is there any discussion beyond what we've had? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Most curious. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Is there anything you need Good luck with the variance. Oh, yeah. It's no fun. <laughs> I know. But everybody has been quite cooperative so That's far. Good. So it's been. I'll keep my fingers crossed for you. you know? <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. It's a new generation of uh, <laughs> phone service and. and, and, and antennas to go with it, the, the church might want to keep its eye on. Yes. So I'm not sure. We have. What the hell? Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> we have been trying to, you know, work out that. Um, you know, T-Mobile did one upgrade which got smaller antennas up there just recently, mm -hmm. which you guys were aware of. You know, so, so we are trying to, you know, I guess they have the directional things, but the the, uh, those aren't the dishes, are they? No, no, they're they're small, little, vertical, vertical, just yeah. rectangular things. So they're you know probably half the size of the ones that used to be there. Mm -hmm. You know, so Good. we keep getting small. <laughs> Thank Pretty you soon we won't be able to see them at all. Yeah, they'll be just like installed in every telephone pole. Mm -hmm. Nice guys. The next, the next items on our agenda are um, seven uh, through eleven. Uh, State Hospital Project Updates, Preservation Awards, Staff Subcommittee, Permits, Review of Mail, and Other Business. Other, because of the hour, I, I want to move as quickly as we can through this, if, or, or table some of them until next time. Um, are, are there any I don't think there's anything on the State Hospital Memorialization Committee. No, it's moving. Yeah, the State Hospital, we'll talk about that the next yeah. time. But, next I, but I would like to say something about the Preservation Awards. You would like to yeah, I'd like to say something about that. Okay, very good. Go ahead. <laughs> so, so I, I noticed you, 
if you all recall, there's a, um, or don't recall, there's a Google um, sheet that Sarah uh, shared with all of us. Mm -hmm. um, and I had asked people to, and I see Craig and Martha signed up to take responsibility for some of the projects. So if other people could do that too, and the idea is you contact that person and try and get maybe some before and after pictures and just details of what it is um, that uh, what was done for the project. And some of these actually are pretty vague. I don't know if we're actually giving awards to all these because some of them, you know, we need to maybe next meeting discuss okay. some of the. But, and the other thing is that I did ask. Um, I got an answer from um, uh, Laurie and Betty, co-directors at Historic Northampton, and who were happy to host this. I think we talked about that last time, to host an award ceremony. But I asked for dates in May that would be possibilities there. And they gave me the 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th, and also the 21st and the 23rd. I'm not going to be available. On the, I'm not going to be in town on the 21st and the 23rd. And I almost feel like it's getting too close to Memorial Day. I don't know. Yeah. But no. so seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, and actually, I don't. Does anybody have a calendar that they know what days of the week those are? Yeah, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, are Monday the seventh. Oh, so Tuesday it's a Monday. The eighth. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Yep. So I think Monday probably is a great idea. I don't know. We, I mean, we've never held them on a Monday. We could try it, what, but what, we've what generally nice done it. What? what nights do we generally hold? Well, we usually help them like from four to six in the af in an afternoon. We could do an evening. Yeah. You know, make it easier for after people. Dinner. What? After dinner or something. Yeah. Is May 9th the f oh no? May 9th is Wednesday. It's, yeah, that doesn't matter to me if it's the first. Clear for me. Yeah. So if there's a a day when most of us are available, it might be better. So we want to try for May 9th. Yeah. That yeah. Wednesday night, and should we? You think should we try an evening? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Seven p.m. start. So we want to do it just great. from seven yeah. to nine or seven to eight thirty. Yeah. Um, so, okay. Barbara, just uh, one yeah. more time. So you'd sure. like us to try to get the before and after photos yeah. and so, uh, some kind of a description. Just right? so we know, yeah, yeah. something. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure we should contact people for these things unless we've decided. Yeah, that's true. Going we have to get an award. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, but we need to know. I mean, to me, oh, yeah, but to me, you know, I need to know. <laughs> I need to know what some of these were. There was, there was one, one something that isn't claimed. But I, can I, because of the, of the yeah, um, yeah. transmission of okay. the recording of this, but we, yes. um, out of a sense of preservation of privacy, we refer yes. only the the the, uh, uh, the address and not not the paper. Family names again. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't even have to. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to think of one. We don't. Don't. Maybe go on Google Street View to look at yeah. the old pictures. But there's why can the I don't even have to say what, if you look. There's one that says significant repair to side of the house, and I just don't know what that is. What house was Swan it? Street? It was 15 Swan Street, and I don't know who I don't remember who suggested that. So it's just a question of us having enough information so that we can right. vote. So you may be right. Don't contact the person yeah. yet. <laughs> but Did it come um, the of a, of a subcommittee to finalize this, or do we um, need do we need to do it? Yeah, I, I would say that between now and our next meeting, we should have a definitive list that we can vote on. And I at that agree. time, yeah. okay. you've got the mechanics. So we just can vote on it at the end of the month. Okay. Could I, could I suggest that, Barbara, can you lead this, lead a subcommittee sure. and, and yeah. choose mm -hmm. your the members and uh, okay. and then present the final list for the okay. approval of the um, of this commission? So the subcommittee okay. then should. I think that's a good idea, and then the subcommittee could go look at the because mm -hmm. I'm sure not everybody knows where all these properties right, are, right. are. So okay, okay, and that so uh, whoever you want, um, including <laughs> members you want to hear tonight, and um, all right, uh, I'll contact people, and then we will um, we will, we will vote to approve okay, that so list. My name is on list. Okay, okay, all right. Be happy to. Ride around with you looking at okay. these. Okay. Maybe the three of us should do a little right. road trip together. Thank you very much, Mary. Okay. Bicycles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we probably I'm leading tour bike tours in Bolivia, actually. Okay, I'm like, wait. Yeah, it's too early. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I could if it's a nice day. Okay. All right, so I'll um, be in touch about that to do a boot right. so that at the um, March 26th meeting, we'll have it ready to vote. And I just wanted okay. to mention that Barbara. It tomorrow, uh, Wednesday night, the meeting happens, is going to be presenting the historical commission's right, applications right. to the CPC for the gravestone conservation and the planning, preservation plan. So, right. she's 
Good for you. It was in a huge snowstorm again. This yeah, Wednesday is supposed Wednesday. to be. A this place. happened the first Wednesday yeah. in um, yeah. in February. Yeah. Bad storm. Oh yeah, that's right. Because it's my night at the cot shelter. Yeah, I, think I'm really I had to get Joe to help me because my friends didn't come from that. Anyway, oh. we'll see what happens. Okay. Um. Okay with that. I don't expect. Know what any staff uh, work, um, issued permits? Um, I more any mail that we have. Um, we um, the, the the erected concrete wall uh, on Brown Hill that we um, still discussed and noted uh, in a prior meeting uh, uh, has there's been no application made on it. Uh, it, it continues. Uh, to be a bit of an enigma, um, but um, we uh, anticipate, you know, wait for their application to us, uh, um, and uh, we'll take it from there. I can't say more. Um, but um, uh, is there anything else that is um, unforeseen? With I just wanted to mention one um, report I heard on the radio and uh, looked at it again today. The Springfields passed their CPA last year. I'm looking at Craig because you probably know this. And one of the um, uh, ideas, I guess I would say at this point, is the, um, they're looking to get proposals to have developers re uh, have rehabilitate historic homes in the city that are falling apart and make them available to first-time home buyers. And I thought, what a great idea, you know? I mean, I think it's, and, and I think it's apropos to what we just talked about tonight, you know, that we do have, not a lot, but we have a good number of, you know, homes in the city that are not in the greatest condition. Mm -hmm. and I see a lot of them. I'm sure you do, yeah. And so if there's, you know, there's just something to think about. I think that there's an opportunity there. I don't know how it works, if, you know, if there are models out there for making it happen, but I think it would be something that, you know, would be but worth pursuing. Particularly in the gateway cities, because mass development's been ordered into most of the gateway cities to do things that are creative and never heard of to try to yeah. jumpstart things. Yeah. Like, there's a lot going on in oil right now. Yeah. In Springfield, too. Yeah. There's, there are four hundred thousand dollar grant for a complete streets project. It just gave Springfield almost three hundred sixty-five thousand dollars to do the same sort of thing. So there's money being available. That's a very creative thing, what you just described. I don't know if it, it's almost, it's almost as if it's begging for a court case to determine if it could get funded. I have no idea. I mean, it was certainly something to watch. It was the, the uh, chair of the CPC in Springfield was being interviewed on the radio. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, maybe it won't happen. I don't know. But it's, <coughs> well, we have, it's seen, we have seen something that's a bit like that in the, in the sense of the, the coordination um, on Bridge Street uh, of the, the building just beyond uh, historic Northampton. Right. Uh, which is uh, both historically yeah, you know, the, sergeant, the sergeant house. Yeah. 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 It's owned by the CPC, right? Right. Yeah. And has received CPC mm -hmm. funding. Right. And does a mm -hmm. does a um, it, its work includes uh, you know low and it's CRO uh, it's SRO right moderate income. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I think that it got CPC funding for the affordability piece. Yeah. Of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but it sounds like this would be historic preservation funding. So then the tie, I guess, I guess would be right. the um, preservation restriction. It's um, unfortunate that, that right. these good ideas are coming at a time when, the, as you well know, the CPC funding right. is, is dwindling um, yeah. and because uh, there's so many projects that are, are worthy. Yeah. yeah. One of the but, things uh, I always thought would be appropriate along those lines is to get the Habitat for Humanity people mm -hmm. to do rehab instead of building these new little I houses. I agree with you. And little houses I mean, that are not in town. Right. You know, that this are would not. Be an ideal thing for a habitat. I agree, Bruce. I mean, I think Talk if there's, yeah, no, I mean, I think if there's any way, you know, maybe this is something that goes into our preservation planning effort if we get our funding that, you know, we look at that, some models for making that happen. Well, it's, it's always, 
a good idea to monitor the CPC listserv and their, uh, their newsletter that goes out because a lot of stuff is cutting edge and the thing in Acton, did that get, get uh, solved yet, the Acton court case about the funding of a church? I don't know if that got, we yeah, had discussed yeah. about that. I, we discussed it. Um, yeah, because St. John's has come before the CPC, and you know it's always a discussion. So. I love the CPC. <laughs> All right. It is. Um, okay. Enough. Sorry. We can talk about it next. It is not so the team. We've gone past our typical uh, adjournment time. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Please also pay your approval by rising. Good to see you. We will see you on the 26th.